So welcome to Spiritual Conversations. And the topic today is, are we the same or different? And uh, I'm always curious to hear how people perceive um, people who are not like ourselves. Some people are very critical of people who are not like ourselves and some people are very welcoming. And I thought, well, what's, what's the bottom line here? And, and the way I viewed it is I think the bottom line is whether they're the same as us or not the same or they're different to us. That seems to be the bottom line. <laughs> if they're part of our family grouping, um, all good. If they're not part of our family grouping, well, um, yeah, people can have differences of opinions. So, yeah, there's the question. Open for discussion. Um, love to hear people's views. So, Vin, what do you reckon? Are we the same or different? I think we're the same, but we are different. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think the answer is is both. Um, you know, it, it is funny, though, that we do um, sort of put out put our own stuff, our baggage on other people and sort of expect them to conform to what we expect. Um, and I often, I often say, uh, I don't know who came up with the saying, um, but I say to people, you know, when you point your finger at, at someone, there's actually three fingers pointing backwards at you. And what, what I mean by that is that often you, you tend to, well, people tend to criticise others aspects of others that they want to improve in themselves and so they sort of externalize it onto others and, and say how oh, you should do this and you should and what they're really meaning is see yeah, i really would like to do this about for myself you know so yeah yeah, yeah. It, there's a similar we want to sort of see similarities in others and i suppose when we see differences we um you know we, we, we sort of have a bit of an issue with that sometimes yeah um Oh, I clicked the answer button for Kelly. <laughs> Kelly asked, what's um, my faith? Uh, do we, Kelly, are you coming in? Um, that question remains. Um, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm actually a practising Catholic. Um, so that, that, ha that hasn't been all the, all the time in my life. Um, but at this stage in my life, that's what I am. And, um, oh, then you've disappeared on us. So I, I like to think that I'm accepting of all faiths. I believe that I am. And um, to me, faith doesn't really um, enter into my acceptance of people or non-acceptance or, or feeling that they're the same or different. Um, so, yeah, I... It, it's a good question because sometimes people do um, perceive and and act out of their knowledge of different faiths. Um, I that's not where I'm coming from, um, and so I asked Ben to answer the question first are we the same or different and and his response was well we're both and yep exactly we're both um in terms of faith i would not want that to be a, a differential from the human person from our humanity um as a catholic what do we know of what jesus said Hmm. Okay, do you want to hop in and elaborate on that question? Um, yeah. So, Vin, just help me with the technology here. Why has that question occupied the box? Um, I think because you've pinned it, you can see where it says pin again. Um, oh, what do I do? I, oh, I thought I, would, I had to click on that to answer it. I was going to type in an answer, but then I thought, well, we'll talk about it. Ah. Okay, well, Nick, so I'll get out of the box then. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? I am blessed, thank you. Ah, uh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Nick, I haven't spotted your, what, what's your dot on the map? 
my dot on the map. What do you mean? Where are you <laughs> located? Oh, Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> from uh, Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. It's about four hours north of oh. Toronto, Ontario. Yeah. Yourself? Uh, I'm Darwin, Australia. In Australia. Yeah. And I'm, in, <laughs> and I'm down un- underneath that in South Australia. Oh, wow. Amazing. Is it La- Lambert is a French name. <laughs> yeah, oh. Lambert. Parlez-vous oh. français? <laughs> Absolument, je parle en français. Vous? Ah, oui, oui, oui. <laughs> yeah, très bien. <laughs> um, so, Nick, um, yeah, oh, I'm not sure if I'm hearing you well. Um, there you are go. You me? Yeah, yep, that's okay. So, yeah, do you want to elaborate on that question? Um, what do we know of what Jesus said? Right. Um... I believe that uh, uh, through through Jesus and the way that he provided and the example, the perfect example of love and compassion that he gave and his uh, method, if you will, of uh, accessing God as father to be able to have a an unbroken relationship with our creator. Um, I believe that he, he's made it accessible through you know, through his message, what he said that he would uh, shed his blood for the remission of many and that he would give his body uh, for all that if we if we really seek the truth, that we can all access that through him and that it. Oh, it looks like Nick's connection is a bit dodgy uh... there. Yeah, there's you yeah. still with us, Nick? Yeah, Nick, can you hear us? You're frozen. Your image is frozen, but is the audio still working? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, audio well, only. Audio, but not even. Yeah. yeah really good one. Yeah, Thanks, refresh, Kinder. Nick. Yeah. Always yes. refresh. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're the host. <laughs> been made available hey we've got b more hey hey raymond raymond where are you nice to see you if we do yeah well that that was uh, yeah i was impressed with what nick said that we we can pick a person who has walked the earth and delivered a message as to how we can view this very question and he used jesus and there have been other you know prophets or heroes <laughs> without getting a bit crass um but well, yeah Gun- wisdom, Gundy. Gundy. yeah Gundy people of great wisdom yes and yeah, the Dalai okay. Lama. yeah so so many people of great wisdom and and of different faiths and like it, it's wonderful the what was that image where the pope and who was it from another faith um they they were connected and shaking hands and joined in meeting and said we are one in spirit even though others may perceive them the pope as just catholic and whoever it was i can't remember maybe it was the dalai lama um so yeah like fundamental differences may be perceived by some people because faith can be what drives us as a person but here we have the two people who are you know i suppose top of the chain (laughs) of those lines of faith saying that we're in this together there's togetherness and we're similar. Yeah, I, I yeah, think I faith think and religion faith is probably a good probably place, a good place to, um, um, to start this conversation. I guess it has to feature uh, as a part of the conversation because um, when you look around the world, there is a lot of conflict caused by uh, differences of, of faiths, uh, difference in religions. And, you know, one that comes to my mind first and foremost is Israel where you have you know two two very different peoples sort of living together uh in in huge conflict and um there doesn't seem to be 
I would love to uh, see an interview. I mean, I, 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 I watch just a, a bit of stuff online about how um, well, Al Jazeera is a pretty good source of this, where I was watching it the, the other day where um, a Palestinian uh, had, uh, sorry, a Jewish man had set up a shop in a Palestinian area and, and 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 sort of was co-partners with a Palestinian. And so there were two of them working together and it was like, oh, this is normal in most parts of the world, but in Israel it's, or Palestine, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of unheard of because these two peoples don't really mingle that well. And um, I think there would be sort of an exaggeration or, or an amplified uh, example of what we're talking about here where we're just, we're both, we're all, you know, just humans on this earth and yet, we have such uh, big, um, what's the word, rifts between the yeah. two peoples that are, you know, they shouldn't be there and they're sort of ingrained from an early age. So it's that conditioning yeah. as a child that, that they sort of grow up to feel that the other person's different. Yeah. And, you know, a similar thing happened in, in the World War. You know, my, my father talks about how he grew up in the war in London and um, how the propaganda was so strong that, as children, they thought the Germans were were um, animals, you know, like the, the creatures of, you know, that weren't even human. Um, and, and that's how he was affected as a child. And he broke into a prisoner of war camp <laughs> as a yeah. child and um, met these Germans and they gave him chocolate and he was just so amazed that they were not monsters. They were just normal yeah. men who, wow. who willingly just gave their, shared their chocolate with, with this small boy. So... Wow. Um, you know, it's conditioning, and and yeah. there's a lot of um, there's a lot of aspects to why we see the differences in ourselves. Mm. And that's a great example, I think, in the prisoner of war camp, um, because it's it's kind of uh, at the at the bottom of the line, at the end of the line. You know, it's it's the baseline. And what are they doing? They're, you know, sharing the chocolate. Mm. <laughs> and so when you're reduced to we've got nothing else, what do you do? And, and we see that the whole world over even today in mm. times of tragedy. Everyone bands together. You know, people start talking to each other, people in the same street that haven't spoken forever. They don't know their neighbours. You know, look, the, the siege in Sydney you know, look at the massive outpouring and from all walks of life um, that people in their general day-to-day -day business would not be talking or interacting or welcoming or embracing any of those people. But when, mm. when it's really, really tough, um, suddenly it seems that we find our similarity which, you know, and our, our connectedness, which is our humanity. So, yeah. Yeah, I've always, you know, this might sound racist and I definitely don't mean it to be, but I've always been um, amazed uh, at how different um, cultures can so quickly assimilate um, with, with the Western culture, you know, or, or any culture really, but I'm thinking of, you know, when we go to places like um, Africa or even when we first came to Australia and to have these people who have never had any interaction with the West or with white men, um, to be able to then just say, have to learn the language and learn the customs and, and it's like, well, you know, that just shows that even with this separation for thousands of years, having no contact, that we are essentially the same because we can so quickly and easily assimilate to the other person's culture, whether it be black to white or white to black or, 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 or east to west and west to east or whatever, whatever way. It, it's surprising to me how there has been no, no relationship, no connection, no interaction. And yet it's like, just like that. It's like, you know, so instant and quick and easy shows that we are all the same. We are all just human beings. Oh. Um, even though we've had yeah. thousands of years of evolution separately and we're physically looking different, you know, with different features, different skin colours. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're all the same. We're all just human beings. Yeah, yeah. And an, an example of 
what you're saying is my daughter has gone to Kalimantan, like one of the, 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 the jungle island, if you like, <laughs> one of the very remote <laughs> islands, um, one of the primitive islands in, in Indonesia. Uh, and she's on a cultural exchange, Australian Indonesian youth exchange. And so she's paired up with an Indonesian girl. So there's the two of them and the Indonesian girl. It's an, a, an exchange experience for her too. So she's from Jakarta and Beck, my daughter from Darwin, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> and, um, she went to the village. She's had to live a month in this village in Kalimantan with a family. And that family and that village had never seen a white person before. Becky was the first white person because the other girl she's paired with is an Indonesian girl anyway, but it's all new to her too. But she said they just turned on the welcome because this white person, you know, she had a hero's welcome and, <laughs> and they've just, and, and, when she FaceTimed us, <laughs> this remote area, and she's able to FaceTime, very <laughs> dodgy internet, but anyway. And the mother's there saying, she's my daughter. This one's my daughter. And um, and she said to Becky, how old are your parents? Are they old? <laughs> and <laughs> Becky said, well, you know, they're, they're older. Well, I've got a 30-year-old big sister. And she said, oh. When they die, you come to this <laughs> mother. <laughs> you come to this. You come and live here with this your other family, <laughs> and so they just loved it. And never seen a white person in. You know, obviously they they know what's you know something of going that's going on in the world because they um, were part of this program. They were hosts, and um, just. Yeah, I, I thought there it is, the commonality and the wonderful, wonderful welcome when they had no knowledge of this girl from a country that they, it's unlikely that they would ever venture to because of their remoteness and their conditions. So, yeah, I, th I think that demonstrates our similarity, our common ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'd be an this is always an exploring when when two people like that meet and it's like, oh, what what are our similarities? Do you like this? Yeah, I like that. Oh, so do I. You know, yeah. and it, it yeah. seems to be um, one of the first things people do is strive to find the similarities, the common ground between them that they connect, then can connect on. Yes. And, you know, I don't think there's ever a situation where they go, oh, do you like that? No. Do, do you have this? No. Do you, oh, geez, there's no commonalities between us. So I don't think that's ever happened. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Because we are we are just human beings, and we're all on the on the one planet together. Yeah, which is interesting, and I think you hit the nail on the head, uh, Vin, when you said our differences are our are part of our conditioning. We're we're mm. conditioned to believe that we are different or they are different. It's like in psychology, we refer to it as the out group and the in group. And so we're conditioned to think people on the out group. So they're not how we define ourselves, our family or our close friendships. Or they're on the out group. There's, yeah, well, we can talk about them in, you know, we can find, we can really point out the differences um, in not such a nice way. I think when it's a group, it's it's even easier to do that. Uh, I, um, you know, uh, I was just talking about this with my girlfriend who uh, said, you know, it's when the, when they zoom in and the, and we see individuals and we see, you know, that they're carrying that their their all of their belongings in a back pack on the you know just a little bag and they might I just some of them just have like plastic shopping bags with a couple of change of clothes in. That's it. And and the, and you you know you see oh it's just a mother and a child and a, and a father and they're just 
you know, it's then that you can sort of empathise with them as a family struggling to, you know, these refugees that are just in their thousands just going into, you know, into trying to find a, somewhere to escape the war of, of places like Syria um, where they will die if they don't leave. So, you know, it's, it's a very desperate situation. But as a group, when we say, oh, the refugees, it's, it's easy to sort of distance yourself from them. But when you see the individuals like that little boy that washed up dead on the shore, you know, that rocked the entire world because we saw the individual, uh, the, you know, the impact on this little in, little boy, this individual, whereas when it was a big group of, of people that was like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't, I can't feel empathy for that group because they're, you know, there's nothing, I don't see anything there to connect with. And, um, yeah, it's when we have that distancing of us, of us and them that we don't have that empathy and we don't feel any need to sort of connect or, or help those people. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it makes the world seem like a callous place, you know, and you think, yeah. oh, geez, all these people are desperate. If that was not, if that was your sister or your brother, you would be bending over well, backwards and doing everything you could. Exactly. And I think one of the sayings that I ground myself with frequently is there, but for the grace of God, go I because that could very well be me, as you said. It could be my sister, it could be my daughters, my son. It could be any of us given another set of circumstances or given I was in that place at that time, given that I was born of different parents, uh, does that make me less of a person than I am? Simply that I was born a Syrian you know, of Syrian parents or, you know, uh, there but so, so often there, but for the grace of God, go I. My, my life could be so different. I and, say that all the time. People say, yeah. oh, you know, aren't we lucky to live here in Australia? And I say, no, well, I'm lucky that my mother was, you know, just, you know, how, how could it, how, you know, it's just chance, isn't it? I mean, I could have been born to yeah. an African mother or an Indian yes. mother. But I was born to an English mother who she chose to um, immigrate to Australia before I was born, and that, that's why I was born here. And I'm so lucky and grateful that that was the case. Yeah. But you know, it could have been completely different, and there's nothing other than than chance really that made made me be born of that mother, as opposed to yeah. a mother in a more desperate situation, say in Syria or or anywhere else. Yeah. Um. And I was touched by, I refer to my daughter again, she's, <laughs> she's, I call her the gypsy queen. She just loves to travel <laughs> with a backpack on, <laughs> and, and that's her and she's happy. But she did say to me yesterday, mum, I think I'm looking forward to having a base in Australia. <laughs> anyway, um, prior to this Indonesian experience she's having right now, she was backpacking through India and up in Tibet and she met she was in Dharamasala mm. and she was she befriended the some Tibetan refugees who told their story and so she ended up volunteering and, and working with them teaching them English for uh, over a week or so and so she said to me I can't believe their stories are so sad, Mum. They are so sad. She said it's changed my whole view on how we view refugees in Australia mm. because we're pretty wicked, I think. You know, yeah. we're pretty unforgiving yeah. and uh, we lack understanding and we, you know, we almost lack humanity. And she said it's changed my whole view. She said I don't think I'll be able to listen to people saying what they say about refugees in Australia anymore. Um, and I thought, well, and that is only because, as you said, and, and Raymond has suggested in the comments, it's the stories of the individual that have spoken to her, that have turned her heart. Not that she, you know, she's a compassionate girl anyway, but she didn't un understand, yeah, there's a big refugee story out there and I don't know what I think about it, you know, because what the naysayers are, are saying, yeah, that sounds right. You know, we can't bring people in that we don't really, they're not one of us or they might cause disruption. And so she's young, you know, she's early 20s. 
And um, so she's not sure how to weigh this up, but she said, Mum, I can't, I can't view the, our Australian refugees in the way that people are saying. You know, their stories are yeah. so sad. But, you know, there's, there's a reality as well, and that is that we, yeah, we do have limited resources and, you know, and, and, and just as Germany's finding out now as they've basically said, yeah, we welcome one and all and they've got thousands, yeah. tens, tens of thousands of refugees and they're just going, oh, actually, that wasn't such a great idea. Um, we're, we're, yeah. we're struggling now, we can't cope. But, yeah. you know, ultimately I just think it means we need to, all of us here in, in, the, in the first world, need to, as, far, as, as unfortunate and uh, bad as it seems, we're going to have to take a... a we're going to have to reduce the level of living that we have. You know, we live a very luxurious lifestyle uh, when we compare ourselves with others around the world. And that just has to go down. We can't live in this luxury anymore if we're going to spread it, uh, the resources evenly across the globe as we should. You know, because again, why is that, why is that refugee from, from Indonesia or wherever um, in such a different situation to me. I was just born of a different mother. <laughs> so yes. there's no reason that he no. doesn't have any, I don't have any more rights to the luxury lifestyle that I have than he no. does. And yet I've no. got it. I, I have the yeah. luxury lifestyle that he doesn't have. So, yeah. yeah, it's, it's you know, I can see why people uh, are against taking on the refugees, but, you know, you've got to have some compassion and you're going to have, um, you know, to some more of a global awareness, I think, and, and say, well, okay, I will give up this and that so that others can have a little bit more. Yeah, that good good question and reflective statement there, Raymond. Should or should we be empowering others to lift and grow? And it's I love some of those. Um, what do they call them? The the micro economic projects in mm. in some of the third world countries um yeah and amazing stories of people doing uh, helping people to grow their own economy i have a neighbor here who's doing that in uh, um one of the african countries one of the little ones um it starts with m <laughs> um and she's she was actually born there but has lived all her time in australia and uh, I don't know, in her late, she's in her 60s now. She's, for some reason, she felt she needed to go back there. And so she did. And now she has a little industry of um, needlework and um, sewing and making clothes uh, that she's taught the people there in the village, in the country, to start their own industry and she's she's used her uh, some of her superannuation money you know to mm. buy sewing machines and to deck it out and to find out where they can get fabrics from and um, that's that's her giving back because she said uh, exactly what you said Vin that I was so lucky that my parents they were missionaries I think but they chose to end up living in Australia after doing, you know, all this work in Africa. Mm. And she said, I've, I've lived the high life. Um, it's time for me to do something for, for those people who weren't as fortunate to move from that country where I was actually born. And, and so that's wonderful. I think that is such a wonderful way to go. And exactly what Raymond said, empowering others to, yeah, to grow their own economy, to, yeah, to grow out of such an impoverished situation. And, and it's, it's not easy. I'm not suggesting that's easy. Just go and buy a couple of sewing machines and you're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. she's worked at this over, you know, five years now um, and has spent a lot of time. She goes back every year to train more people and to yes. work out how to get the fabrics for them. And, but it is booming now. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, you know, this morning I was, um, I just had, uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard of Snapchat, but it's a big new thing yeah. that everyone's getting into. And so I've gotten onto it recently. But our friend who you, I think you know, um, Tristan from ATW Networking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he's yeah. taken on a new project. He's just created it himself and, and taken it upon himself to pack everything up into a van and he's calling it the Digital Nomad Project and he's going out and just letting the people on the internet, basically it's on Periscope and Insta, um, Periscope and Snapchat, saying, look, you guys just tell me where to go, what to do, and he's got a budget of $100. And his main goal, which I didn't know until this morning, is about feeding, or not feeding, but helping the homeless and telling the homeless wow. stories for them using Periscope and Snapchat. So he'll, he's, he's very, very um, empathetic for the people who have no homes in Australia, and he says it's, it's, it's really ridiculous that we have homeless people in, in the first world. Yeah. country like australia you know yeah. we should be, be doing everything we can for these people our own people here in australia and so yeah he it was such a commendable um uh, act that he's doing so he's actually you know i think yesterday he said he had two biscuits for breakfast and that was it wow. um and you know he's trying huh. to empathize completely yeah. and live the lifestyle yeah. and, it, and and he's struggling but um wow. You know, a lot of his day is is looking for a place to park his van so he can sleep somewhere, um, where to get food because he's you know he only has this one hundred dollar budget for three months, so yeah, it's 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 a project well worth uh, checking in on and and sharing and supporting. So, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, you that's check it out. It's, the, it's called yeah, the Digital oh, Nomad Project. Okay. Um. When I was uh, the president of Vinnie's up here, St Vincent de Paul Society in the Territory, um, and, and they still have it. They have the CEO sleep out once a year and it's in the coldest time of the year. Well, in Darwin in June, <laughs> how cold does it get? <laughs> but on the 16th of June, it's pretty well around that date, in every state, in Australia, and I don't know if it's around the world, they have the CEO sleep out, where all the heads of um, organisations, uh, they raise money, they get sponsors and they raise as much money as they can and it's a little bit of a competition. They see the sponsor tree building up and who's made this amount of money and all of that's online. And then on this one night, you you go and you sleep in a paddock on cardboard, on car yeah, just sheets mm -hmm. of cardboard. So we were lucky when I did it. We had um, two, I was allowed two sheets of cardboard, not just one. And <laughs> you're allowed to take a, a sleeping bag or, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> at the stadium. Yeah, on the lawns it normally is. Um, so it's got to be outside, even in Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> and Tasmania, which is absolutely freezing. But the idea is that you live homeless for a night and the Vinnie's van, the food van, comes around to this event and you eat off the food van. So you have whatever um, was being, you know, dished up for the people, the, the homeless people on that day and um, you get your one cup of tea and sugar. Well, it's endless really. Um and so people, that, that's got a lot of patronage and raises huge amounts. And when I did it, I thought, yeah, it's a great cause. But how easy is it for us to do one night of camping mm. <laughs> when you know you're going back to your luxury the very next day? Like so they have it on a Thursday night, so some people... Like you have to go back to work. You you have to go mm. from there to work. Some people detour or, you know, go and shower and go to work. But the idea is that you have to keep functioning. You have to see what it's like living a night like that and the and then go and, you know, do your next day. Mm. Mm. So strong. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, yeah, well, that's sure. exactly what. That's what you're, exactly what Tristan is doing, he, and I was surprised. It's like, oh, what? He's going to a meeting. Uh, geez, you, you've been struggling to try and get some food and where to park, and now you're off yeah. to a business meeting. So he's still running his business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. And to me, that that's obviously more authentic way of doing it uh, than just one night 
knowing that, oh, I'll get this night over and done with and then I can, you know, I can go back and have my lovely dinner, my glass of wine. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah. well, lucky for Tristan, he has a van. So, you know, all he has yeah. to figure out is where to park it, whereas the, the people who are actually homeless, they, they yeah. don't even have that, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I when I go into the city here in, in Adelaide and I walk around, I often just duck down side streets because there's always something interesting to discover in the, in the side streets. And um, when you do go in those less travelled side streets, you find a bunch of um, belongings, you know, just tucked in a corner somewhere, like a yeah. blanket and some, a bag yeah. of clothes. Yeah. You think, well, well, he can't carry them around with him everywhere. And so now yeah. he, he's just risking them being stolen. So his only yeah. possessions are, you know, his blanket, which he's going to need to sleep in tonight. Uh, yeah, uh, and that could be that a council worker could just come and take that away and throw it in the bin. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's hard. It's it's pretty it's tough when you're living like that. So I had a number of questions that um, you know we're not going to get to, but we've I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed ah Raymond, good on you. Um, thoroughly enjoyed how the discussion's gone as well. Hey. How's hey. the Gold Coast? Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm, just on, I'm just on the iPhone and, I, and I've broken my number one rule. I'm not dressed. I'm, I'm running around. But I thought, yes, I, just, I just thought I'd uh, pop in. I'm sort of dressed. <laughs> I, yeah. thought I'd, I thought I'd pop in, just say hello and say how much I've been enjoying the, your, um, your blab. Oh, thank you. Thanks for popping in. It's great to see you and Happy New Year. You know, happy. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm glad. It's good to see your your smiling face, Margaret, back on um, back on the airwaves. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, how's the Goldie? Uh, it's it's actually beautiful at the moment. Really, really lovely. Lovely temperature. Lovely weather. Surf. Everything. It's all. It's all working. It's all coming together. <laughs> I, I yeah. Um, blame myself for asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> I had to hear the answer. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful part. I just love being down there. So, um, yeah, I, well, I'm going to fire the next question at you, Raymond, seeing you <laughs> you've popped in. Yeah. Um, I did have a, a couple of questions planned and one of them was, are you hearing me okay? I'm getting a little feedback. Do, it's a tiny bit of buzz, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Um I'll just turn the volume down a fraction. Um, do the differences between us or among us, I suppose between if they're differences, do the differences enhance us or deplete us? The, so the, you, you, you think of the differences in that you're saying in different um, colours, creeds, personalities, yeah. likes, everything? Yeah. I think um, the discussions, I'm going to take these out better. There's a bit of a twang going on this end. Uh, sounds like you've got a tap running now, but it might go away. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll put those back in there. There we go. It's a, it's a, just a tiny little buzzing. Yeah, every I now think and then. the conversation so far has established that we are uh, we are similar we are more similar than different and our differences are uh, are well apart from the obvious physical differences but they've been conditioned we've been conditioned to oh. know about how we or others are different I would say that things enhance us, enhance us because, you know, you, you go back just looking from an Australian culture, you know, um, let's say, let's go back even 20 years ago and just look at the, the diversity in, in food and, and things that we have now uh, in the way that we do things because of these different cultures and different melting pots and different points of views. And, and even if you want to look on a spiritual or a, or a growth uh, side of things, um, look at all the different philosophies that we're now able to sort of uh, encompass and, and to recognise in our daily life. You know, like many years ago, as, um, 
as a young as a young guy, you know, I think I spoke to you, you know, I was interested in meditation and all these different things. Just just through my personal circumstances, that sort of came across. You know, I had a um, an Asian um, man that taught me to meditate, and he also um, you know worked with me on on different. Uh, he did hypnosis with me and did all these different things, but. It, I wouldn't have had those, you know, different philosophies. You wouldn't have Buddhist philosophies. You wouldn't have all those different great things that we have now when we're able to open our eyes and listen and look at what different cultures have and have to gift uh, to us. So I, I think that, you know, differences and even thinking differently now, even the people that are uh, um, thought of as radical in a lot of ways are actually the new thinkers of this generation. And, and I think there's something to be praised in that rather than, um, mm-hmm. rather than sort of, you know, dissed. That's my interesting yeah. viewpoint anyway. Yeah. 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 What, what, what's your opinion on that, Ben? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, it's the differences that we have that to enrich our world. You know, if we were all, uh, you know, if there were no races just to take one aspect, um, we, you know, we just, I, I often think about what's it going to be like in the, in the, you know, maybe a million years in the future or thousands of years in the future where we've all just sort of intermingled so much. Are we all going to become like a, like a, a, a light brown colored <laughs> race of people that are all just the same and we won't have, you know, imagine traveling to another country where it's just all the same, you know, it's one of the reasons I haven't really wanted to go to another Western country. Cause I think, well, if I go to America, it's just going to be much the same as Australia. Um, so I'd rather go to like an Eastern country or somewhere where there's a whole different culture. Um, so I can experience something completely different. And, you know, that's, that's, that's the, that's the draw card is the actual differences. Um, that's, that's what's appealing to me to go to those other countries. So, yeah, I, I really embrace the differences. I think it's the, one of the great things that we have that, uh, enriches our lives. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, and, you know, this is an issue also with um, the sexes, you know, when we when we talk about equal rights between uh, the sexes um, and the genders, I should say, you know, uh, often we're trying to then um, remove any dis- distinctions or, dis- uh, you know, distinctive elements that make us different. We sort of say, oh, you know, just want to smooth over those and make us all the same. And, I, you know, I think that's a, a danger that comes with any um, type of generalization or, or, you know, assimilation of people within a group, you know, there's always that risk of what are we going to lose by doing this? Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I, I always think too, what, what aren't we, you know, when, when our ideas all become so merged and so together, what are we missing out on in the, in the, in the point of view of what are we not thinking about now? Or what are we not, how are we not growing because we're all thinking in the same or looking in the same direction and, and missing maybe what's right sort of beside us or, or around us, you know? Mm, mm. Yeah. If, if I can ask the next question, what attitudes would help the world more? If we talk about our similarities and differences and we know that some people do adopt like the in-group attitude versus the out-group attitude where the out-group is not as good as we are. Um, So what attitudes with our similarities and differences would help the world more and help us be able to move forward in a much more harmonious way? Well, if you're asking me, I'm always going to say allowance. I always put that as my number one and being, being an allowance of differences and, and people's different ways of looking at things and viewpoints and uh, ideas. And, and, and I, I say that as different to tolerance because I've always looked at tolerance as just a putting up with. And I think that that's what a lot of people do now is they just tolerate people and they put up with it and somewhere that's going to build up and you're going to have this sort of, judgment somewhere underneath where you know where where true allowance is 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 devoid of judgment you're 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 not sitting in judgment of someone you're really truly being an allowance of them for who they are and it's it's not a doormat either you know you know it doesn't mean that just because someone's got a different culture that they should push that onto you it's it's more about being truly being able to see what they have to gift and and being okay with them having differences to the way that (laughs) that you would do something or the way that you would look at something or the way that you choose. That's my interesting take mm. on it. Yeah, I love the, the 
difference you've made, the, the distinction you've made between tolerance and allowance. That's, yeah, I like that. Um, so in the event that we have people who are, are different, if you like, um, and want to express their extremism, how do we, yeah, what? You had to you had to go there, didn't you, Margaret? You had to you had to take it there. But see, what's what's extremism as well? You know, I, I heard a um I heard a thing today that you'd probably be really interested in is you know, you know they've they've announced that they're that they're monitoring all Facebook and all social media posts and all that sort of stuff. And there was two examples where where people had been wrongly. You know, like a guy said, you know, he was one, one guy was going to Paris and he said, hey, I'm going to blow this place up, like, you know, you know, in a post. And he meant he was going to party hard. Yeah. And obviously yeah. he was stopped at the airport, denied entry, all these sorts of things. And there was another guy that had Googled all these, uh, Googled all these things about, you know, how to um, <clears throat> get away with the murder and get rid of fingerprints and do all this sort of stuff. And he, he was rated. And, um, and, you know, look, this, this is second, third hand information. So, you know, take it at whatever the Chinese whispers story, but, but I do believe that it's an orig it's a real uh, story that they've rated this, they've rated this guy and tied him up and he was a writer for something like CIS, you know, CSI, CSI Miami or something, you know, and he's actually, so he's Googling things to get more clear on, you know, what he, on his content. <laughs> so, so ex extremism, what, what is it? You know, what's extremism at, compared to what you know compared to the way we think so you know the extreme as in i think that as long as you're not infringing upon others or hurting others in yeah. way, and if you're looking to harm others then mm. i think that's extreme because you know we have no right to 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 infringe our will on someone what do you think Vin? i think you've just uh jumped on the the negative connotations of the word extreme when i first heard margaret say that i was thinking of mm. Uh, the joys of extremes. Um, when I came back from traveling in Egypt, I the, one of the first things that, that struck me was it was such a massive relief was when I saw people walking around with mohawks and another person had pajamas on and someone didn't have any shoes on and it was just you know um, you know punk the way punk people dress is considered extreme and, and even to the point of offensive. And I thought, well, geez, if you can be offended by the way someone else dresses, that, that's ridiculous. Um, oh. You know, how, how sensitive do you have to be to other people's um, fears or, or preconditions or whatever um, to go about your own life? I think, I think it's really great that here in Australia we have the freedom to, to, to do whatever you like to, in, in terms of just clothing you know, to wear whatever you like. Uh, whereas in Egypt, everyone had a moustache, everyone wore exactly the same clothes, <laughs> everyone looked identical. And there was no, you know, it was all the same and it was all bland. And and they didn't feel that same freedom that we have here where you can just breathe easy and do whatever you want. Um, wow. You know, so I think it's those extremes that are great, that that that, that bring the diversity to our lives that, that I, I so much hunger for. Wow. The, well, the, the something yeah. I, I, I really worry about is that we all become sort of bland, mediocre, sort of middle of the road, sort of <laughs> you know, boring. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Sorry, I was, just, just here, give, I was giving you props, but my, my phone knocked out. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, yeah, and full credit to you for your positive line on the extremism because it actually wasn't in my mind. <laughs> well, but, but I think that, you know, what Vin's saying is absolutely correct. You see, yeah. so where, did, where did I go? Because of the, you know, the popular point of view at the moment yeah. is, is that's what we're conditioned at the moment to yeah. think of. And it's exactly the same point I was making earlier is that, you know, we need to step outside those boxes and, and have the people that are thinking differently and looking differently, you know, because that's, yeah. you know, without Vin here today, we might have gone on that tangent, you know. Yeah. So, um, and, and I totally agree um, that I think the differentiating point or the, the demarcation point, if you like, as to when um, it's not allowable to use your word, make an allowance. Um, it is when people begin harming others. 
through, you know, their words or their actions. I, I think all of it's abuse, whether it's it's verbal or physical, and and that's the demarcation line, in my opinion. Um, otherwise, the differences. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you. They do enhance who we are, and more than tolerance, that allowance. I, I love that concept, but it. It becomes unallowable when you're stepping into someone else's uh, safety zone and moving into the harming zone. So just in winding up, if you um, would like if any, any final comments on this topic or something else and let people know where to find you. So... Ben, do you want to kick off there? Yep, sure. I would just um, say what I said before in a more condensed, summarised manner, and that is try as hard as you can not to generalise and, and treat a, a group of people. Rather, try and see the individual and, and think about them when you're talking about a, a type of person because it's, it's so easy to, um, to generalise and... and be detached from that group of people uh, if you're thinking of them thinking of them as a group rather than empathizing with them as an individual and, and it's something that we all just tend to fall into doing often um you know I, I see it all the time in conversation when people talk about them or a group that they're sort of uh distancing themselves because they're not uh, um talking about the individual they're talking about the group and that's how you know that's how racism and and all those things come around Oh. Yeah, good point. Raymond. Okay, firstly, you can find me at B underscore more you if you're looking for me on Twitter. Um, that's probably the best way at the moment. I'm doing a bunch of other stuff, but that's where we're at. That's easy to find me at the moment. And my final thoughts is that if uh, Will Smith doesn't actually attend the Oscars, that will that make him the fresh prince of not there? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to had to make some corny. <laughs> uh, we can always rely on you. <laughs> uh, and um, Vin, did you give your details? Vintuitive, oh. that's pretty well. Go on. No, I didn't. Thank you very much. Um, I am Vin from Vintuitive. I also run a thing called Australia Great. So I'd love to just give a plug to that. We're doing a really big thing on Australia Day. So do come along. Um, just look at Australia Great, one word on Twitter. That's where all the stuff's announced. And uh, I'll even chuck it in the comments here for you. So yeah, thanks, Margaret. It's been an excellent conversation. As always. Yeah, thank you both so much. And, and to the people who have commented um, in, in the side comments, um, particularly, I think, is it Austin? I love the comment about mindfulness and uh, practicing mindful breathing to develop your inner compassion, not only for yourself, that compassion flows out. That's compassion for others so that we're more, we can embrace ourselves and others. So I'm Austin. Margaret. Go on. If I just say, if you don't already know of Austin, he does uh, some great stuff on Periscope, uh, mindful right. technique and breathing and stuff. So, it's worth so checking thanks out. for your comments, Austin. I've I've really enjoyed them. Um, yeah, great. I'll certainly be following you. So um, I do these regular blabs. I've got a wellbeing weekly one on a Wednesday, same time as this started. And next week is how much self-care do we need? We, you know, there's so many things out there that we want to try and incorporate. How, how much do we really need to do? And next, spiritual conversations on Friday, same time, Australian time, um, is who inspires you? So if anyone wants to sign up to those questions or think about them over the week, uh, I'd love to have you join in either of those sessions next week on Blab. And, uh, yeah, I'm Margaret Lambert. You can find me at margaretlambert.com. And thanks, Ben's put details in the comments there. 
margaretlambert.com will get you the replays of the blabs and uh, will lead you to where you can view previous blabs and periscopes as well as lots of articles and other stuff on the website. So thanks for joining in and so great to see you. <laughs> yeah, lovely to see you. So I hope it's a great year for you. And Vin, thanks again for popping in. Thank you. So thank you, guys.